All right, good afternoon, everyone. Hope you're having a great day and uh, staying safe, dry, and warm. <laughs> it's not a miserable day outside, but I uh, hope you're doing well. We're going to learn uh, two Rashis from the fourth Aliyah in this Parsha of Bo. And uh, in the fourth Aliyah, we get uh, closer, at least, to the climax of the Parsha. We get to some of the predictions of what's going to happen in Machas Bechoros and the moments, actually, of Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim when the Jewish people are going to leave. So the Aliyah begins, talking about HaKadosh Baruch Hu's spirit coming out in the middle of the night, a huge outcry in Mitzrayim, Asher, Kamohu, Lo, Niyasava, Kamo, Lo, Sosif, like there never was before, never will be afterwards. Some of the miracles that will happen to B'nai Yisrael, Chol B'nai Yisrael, Lo, Yechratz, Kelev, Lashona, Lameish, Bad, Behema, beautiful statement about how special and unique the Jewish people were, how separated they were, how peaceful this exit would be for them. It wouldn't be amidst war and terror and fright, but not even a dog would bark, not even a dog would show their teeth or their tongue to any member of the Jewish people at the time, indicating the calm, the calm, the quiet of this whole experience for them and uh, increasing the greatness of God in our eyes for being able to separate between uh, the pain and affliction to the Egyptians and the saving of the Jewish people at that moment. And then part of what Hashem and then Moshe is going to predict here to Paro is how the Egyptians are going to react after Makas Bechoros. In a very beautiful puzzle, it says, Vayardu kol avadecha eile elai. Moshe or Hashem is saying to Paro that all of your servants will come down to me, vishtachavu li lemor, and will bow down to me saying, say, ata, v'chol ha'am berasher beraglecha. Leave you and the whole nation that's in tow, beraglecha, literally like following you. And then I will leave. And he left Paro uh, in a in a half in in anger. So what exactly is the meaning or the necessity of this pasuk, sort of predicting that the avadim would come and bow down to Moshe? So uh, Rashi says over here, kavod lamalchus. The whole purpose of this statement is to show us how Moshe Rabbeinu, even at this stage of the story, or predicting that stage of the story, would be showing honor to Paro. Later on in the story, we're going to learn that in the middle of the night, as the terror of Makas Bechoros is alive and well, we're going to read about the fact that Paro himself will come out of the palace, come to Moshe, and beg him to leave, bow, prostrate, if not physically, then emotionally himself before Moshe, as we see later in the story. He calls them at night. Get out, leave, get out of my nation. Do whatever you want. Take your people, just as you requested. Take them to serve God. So Paro himself was going to be humbled before Moshe Rabbeinu. And yet in the prediction, Moshe never says that to Paro. In the prediction, he says, your servants will bow down to me. Your servants will tell us to leave with all the people in tow. But he doesn't remind Paro that that's going to happen to him. And according to Rashi, that's because Moshe was showing honor to Paro. Kavod l'malchus, honor for the station of the king. And Moshe never predicted to him that he would bow down to him and he would prostrate himself in that humiliating way before Moshe Rabbeinu. The reason I mention this Rashi is because this takes us full circle to the beginning of Va'era. I believe maybe on the Monday of last week of Va'era, we learned the Pasuk, which says, that God commanded Moshe upon the Jewish people and upon Paro, or regarding the Jewish people and regarding Paro. And the end of the Pasuk is Israel, to take the Jewish people out of Egypt. We asked at that time on the Pasuk, what is he commanding them about or with or regarding these two parties when the command is clear from the end of the Pasuk that he's being told to take them out of Egypt? Rashi says, Vayitzavim was a special command about how Moshe and Aaron were to behave regarding B'nai Israel and regarding Paro. Regarding B'nai Israel, they were supposed to suffer all of the complaints B'nai Israel and the difficulties B'nai Israel would throw at them. And regarding Paro, it was that they were supposed to give him kavod lamalchus, despite the atrocities he had perpetrated and despite the cruelty of his being, 
they were supposed to afford him a certain level of honor just because of his station as a king. And now we see full circle at the end of this story, predicting the last stages of Yetzirah Mitzrayim, we see that actually taking place. We see Moshe Rabbeinu fulfilling that command of, of Hashem in not predicting to Paro and humiliating Paro and lowering his station as king by telling them he would prostrate himself before them. In the end, Paro does do that. In the parent, Paro is demeaned, he is humiliated, he is lowered from his station as king, but not because Moshe is doing that to him, but because that takes place on its own of his own volition. So I thought that was an interesting end to the story and tying back that loop. One more piece of the Rashi that I thought was interesting to think about. Um, in the prediction here, it says, you're going, the, the servants are going to bow down to me saying, Tzayata, leave you, all the nation that's with their feet following you. So what does Asher Barag Lecha mean? Rashi says, Rashi adds in one piece here. The nation is not only following Barag Lecha physically, he's not, the nation's not only physically following your footsteps, following your legs, your raglayim, but following Achar Atzadcha Behilucha. They're following you physically. They're following achar hiluchacha. They're walking where you're going to walk. They're going to walk out of your time. They're going to follow you up. But they're also following your etza. They're following your advice. And I found that fascinating because if Rashi is correct, there's a snapshot moment here where the Jewish people are following fully in the advice of Moshe. That wasn't the case before this point. And it won't be the case after this point. Before this point, they don't listen to Moshe. They give trouble to Moshe. They don't like what he has to say. They don't like the burdens that are placed upon them, right? That was last week's parsha, the end of Shemos, the beginning of Va'era, Lama Hare Osa Lama Zeh, Lo Shemuel Moshe Mikotze Ruch Maradakasha. They couldn't listen to him. They couldn't hear him. They couldn't follow him in his advice. Later in the story of the 40 years in the Midbar, of course, everything's going to go wrong. They're never going to be fully following his advice. They're going to deny this. They're going to deny that. Chet ha'egel, chet ha'meraglim, all of the things. Uh, Kivro satava, the misodonim, the slav, the be'er, the water, everything. Everything's going to go awry. So maybe, maybe there was a moment, though, where they did follow in his footsteps, not only with physical following him, but with following his advice as well. Maybe, maybe that's what Rashi is thinking. Maybe I'm making more of it than it is. But I think the plain meaning of the raglecha is ha'olchim achar hiluchecha. They're walking after your walk. That's the pshat, the raglecha. But Rashi adds in achar atzadcha. They're following your advice as well. Maybe a snapshot into a rare moment in Jewish history where the people follow their leaders uh, with uniformity. Thank you so much, everybody. I hope you have a great day, a great week. Uh, we'll see you at the end of next week, Mirza Shem. Okay. Thank you, Rabbi. Safe travels. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you have a beautiful trip to Israel with your wife. Thank you so much. Be well, everyone.